Hey everybody, Kyle Sasser here, and it's everybody's favorite time of the month. That's right, it's real estate market statistics time. These real estate market statistics are for Pinellas County for October 2024. Now you might be asking, hey, this report says September 2024, why are you calling it October? Well, the reason why is because that is the most recent numbers that we can put together. Whenever we put these numbers together, we are comparing a month in a year-to-year fashion. That means we are comparing September 2024 to September 2023. The reason we do that is because um, if you can't really compare month to month because there's a natural ebb and flow to the real estate cycle in the course of a calendar year. So for example, generally not as many sales in December and also around the start and end of the school year, um, just the number of sales tends to be a little smaller than the adjacent months. So if you look at month to month, it's very hard to gauge where the trend is. However, if if we compare September 2024 to September 2023, we can see where the market is now compared to where it was then. And here's one of the key things (laughs) that most websites and newspapers get wrong is that comparison is what is critical. And you really need to look at long-term periods. So. Obviously, if we're comparing things that are going on now to the peak craziness of 2021 and 2022, then yes, the market is going to look a certain way. However, if you go a little further back and you compare it to 2018 or 2017, you get a little bit different picture of the market. So keep keep that in mind when you see all of these news stories out there um, about what's going on with the real estate market. So before we dive into these numbers, I think it's very important to point out that we can't really do a direct comparison of these because we have obviously had a major event, which is Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton. Obviously, Hurricane Helene came through at the tail end of September. That monkey wrenched all of the September numbers. So you have to take all these numbers with a grain of salt. I'm definitely not basing any perceived real estate trend on these numbers. But I will point out some of the things that I have seen, both anecdotally as well as in the stats. This is going to be true for both uh, Tampa and Hillsborough County, as well as Pinellas County. Uh, So because both of these areas were significantly impacted. Uh, So whenever you have a storm coming through, insurance stops getting written. So you can't close because you can't get insurance. Title companies are closed. So again, you can't close. You know, banks are closed. So wires can't be sent out. It throws a big old monkey wrench into the real estate transaction process. So you kind of have to keep all this in mind as we're going through the numbers for the next couple months here. You know, both September and October are going to be way off kilter because of that. Okay. There is a lot of disruption that has happened. So you can't completely rely on these numbers. Put it this way. These numbers are the numbers for what has actually closed. It doesn't necessarily represent where the market is currently. Usually the month that a major storm comes through, you just, you kind of have to throw it out and always keep in the back of your your mind. Oh yeah, we had like a major shutdown, (laughs) you know, for those few weeks while that storm recovery was going on. And then what also happens is like next year in 2025, when we get back to this same time period, you know, September, October, if there's no major storms during that time period, you're going to see a bunch of news stories about how nuts the real estate market is going. And they missed the key facts that because <laughs> this happened in Irma, it's happened in Tropical Storm Etta, it has happened multiple times. Everyone always forgets when the storms come through and you have to account for that whenever you're looking and comparing these statistics. It, it's, it's wild that <laughs> people don't look at this stuff with that full kind of mindset. So, so anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. And then I will share kind of some things that I've seen happening since these two storms in the marketplace. Uh, Cause again, that is the important part. This, the, the, the numbers and stuff like that, like they are what they are, but what changes and shifts in the marketplace I have seen has more of an immediate impact. If you were looking to buy or sell your house immediately. All right. Well, let's dive into these Pinellas County numbers. Total number of closed sales was down 22.6% from 836 homes sold to 647 homes. Cash sales was down 36.5% from 310 to 197. Median sales price was up 2.7% from $462,500 to $475,000. Average sales price was down 2.7% 
from $607,935 to $591,581. Medium percent of original list price dropped 3.2% from 96.9% to 93.8%, and median time of contracts went up 106.3% from 16 days to 33 days. Now, important to note that at 33 days, we are ticking up into the neutral market territory. Total number of new listings were down 20.7% from 1,176 to 933. And total active inventory was up 60.1% from 1,738 to 2,783. Foreclosures and short sales, or uh, the doom and gloom section. There was a total of four foreclosures and one short sale. Now, I do like to break this down into the different price categories because a million dollar home is going to sell in a little bit different time frame than a $300,000 home. And that's primarily just because there's not as many buyers um, looking to purchase million dollar homes. So typically, they take a little bit longer to sell. So under 100,000, there was a total of zero homes sold. From 100 to 150,000, there was a total of one, which was a decrease of 91.7%. I usually hit the noteworthy numbers here instead of going over each and every one because it can get a little monotonous just reading numbers and numbers and numbers. So I try to keep this a little interesting for you. 250 to 300,000 actually saw a 12.2% increase, total of 56. But everything else was pretty much down across the board so far as total numbers of closed sales. 300 to 400,000 was down 27.4%, 156. 400 to 600,000 was down 22.5% to 217. And 600 to a million was down 18.1% to a total of 140. And a million or more was down 32.5%, total of 56. Median time of contract is up across the board. 300 to 400,000 was up 208.3% to 37 days. 400 to 600,000 is up 106.3% to 33 days. Now, uh, the thing I want to mention about all of this stuff is these numbers only get counted, same with uh, median sales price and average sales price. These numbers only get counted whenever something actually sells. So there is a good amount of homes. Uh, again, we have 2,700 homes that were for sale at the end of the month, and we only sold about 670 homes for that month. And obviously there's a lot of homes that are not selling <laughs> in that time frame. So these numbers do not necessarily account for that. Like those numbers, the amount of time that those homes are on the market does not show up in median time to contract until they actually sell. So it's always important to kind of remember exactly what these numbers are representing. Total number of new listings were also down across the board. 300 to 400,000 was down 16.1% to 203. 400 to 600,000 was down 13.7% to 359. And total inventory was basically up across the board as well. 250 to 300,000 was up 147% to 114. 300 to 400,000 was up 98.2% to 543. 400 to 600,000 is up 75.9% to 962 etc etc rushing through these numbers a little bit faster than i normally do and because obviously there is a big to do that is going on which is we have had two major hurricanes come through and affect the tampa bay area so if you remember back to uh, mathematics class you might remember mean medium mode or uh, average and median as part of, <laughs> of what you learned Best way to describe it is everyone kind of knows what an average is. So an average is you take, let's say, five homes that have sold. You add up that price. You divide it by five. That gives you the average price. Median price is a little bit different. What a median sales price is, is that is the midpoint of the market at which there is an equal number of homes that sold at a higher price and at a lower price. So it, it's more of the midpoint of the market. Now, important to note that whenever there are fewer homes sold, the median sales price tends to move around a little bit more than usual. But I still prefer the median sales price compared to the average sales price because average sales price can be greatly affected if there is a, a larger number of very expensive homes or very inexpensive homes that have sold in a particular time frame. So, for example, if like two Tom Brady houses sell, that is really going to move the average <laughs> sales price 
but it's not really going to have a lot of impact on the median sales price because the median works as good as it can to try to reduce that sort of influence. Now, elephant in the room, Hurricane Milton and Hurricane Helene. Naturally, most of the questions I have been getting for the last couple of weeks is how is this going to impact? Well, first is how do I deal with flooding? If you have any questions about flooding, please let me know. I'm happy to share my personal experience with a flood claim with you. The situation is a little different because this is a federally declared disaster area. So my experience in Tropical Storm Eta and the flooding and recovery from that will be uh, different than what you are able to do. But the, the broad strokes are, are pretty similar. Obviously, these are two terrible storms that came through the area, damaged many, many, many homes. And the unfortunate truth is it's going to take a long time for these homes and neighborhoods to, to recover. In my experience uh, with Tropical Storm Eta, it took about two years to get our house fully back, back together. Now, a lot of that was because the COVID supply chain was, you know, messing up a whole bunch of stuff. We had a section with kitchen cabinets that we basically had to go through two rounds of ordering on kitchen cabinets because one of the cabinets was not correct and cabinets were significantly backlogged then. So it took us approximately, I want to say 12 to 14 months to get the right cabinets back for the house, which is what caused most of the, most of the delay. Currently, the supply chain is mostly back to pre-COVID levels. So we're just kind of in like normal hurricane supply chain issues, which is immediately, you know, it's going to be hard to find supplies to rebuild the house locally, but over time things will come in and it shouldn't be that too problematic. That said, most flood and storm recoveries and insurance claims and all this stuff, it doesn't happen quickly. It usually takes six to 12 months is optimistic. You know, Fort Myers still has not recovered from their 2022 hurricane. There are still many houses down there that have tarps on the roofs and, you know, the houses are not habitable. That's definitely not the case for every house that was damaged down in, in Fort Myers, but it's something that can happen. So it's important to have that correct kind of expectations. If you're expecting this to only take like a week or two to get back to pre-storm conditions, unfortunately, that is not how this usually goes. So again, if you have any questions about, you know, your storm damage, who to call, if you need recommended contractors and stuff like that, please let me know. I actually wrote a very lengthy article about my experience with uh, storm recovery and what I wish that I knew whenever I got flooded. I mean, that is also will be linked in this description down below. So feel free to go read that article. I will probably do a video on that as well, just to help. And again, the current situation is a little different, but the broad strokes are pretty, pretty much the same. Obviously this is real estate uh, channel. <laughs> I am in real estate. A lot of the questions I've been getting is how is this impacting the real estate market? Now, normally whenever a storm comes by, we have what I call the storm hangover, right? So like tropic storm or, you know, so, uh, so Irma, whenever it went by and, uh, you know, the other storms that only affected like a small area of Tampa Bay, like, you know, Shore Acres or Riviera Bay, you know, whenever, whenever those sorts of some storms come by, everything does pause for a while, for days to maybe a week. If there's so, so like Irma, a lot of places, most of the county had actually recovered within a day or two, you know, power coming back on. But there were some of these neighborhoods that took a while to, um, to get power back on, you know, four, five, six days, you know, the cleanup and all that stuff. So that's what I call the storm hangover. So, and that's where things stop for long enough that the numbers get wacky. And you kind of have to keep in mind, especially like next year, right? So whenever we get to September, October 2025, we have to remember that there was major storms in 2024 because that if if you don't keep that in mind, the numbers are going to look crazy, <laughs> which is what's happened after Irma. And uh, it's also what happened, at, you know, with, with previous significant storms that have come through and affected some of the areas. Now, the interesting thing... Now, what has happened with these two storms is there are significantly more homes that were affected, uh, especially, so obviously we're still recovering from Milton, but Helene, you know, there was 16 to 20,000 homes that were flooded. And so what happened was you had all of those people kind of going out, trying to figure out what their housing situation is going to be. They're getting 
input from people like me who have been through it before that are like, hey, this is not going to be like a one, two, three week kind of fix. This is going to take probably months to get your house back together. So what happened was a lot of those folks got that information and then they decided to secure their housing. What I saw happen was within a few days, basically a third of all the rentals that were available were leased. And then about 10, 15% of all of the total inventory for sale went under contract. So obviously a lot of people think, well, those houses got storm damage. Completely legitimate thought. I actually checked that in the, in the MLS because I do with all of the stats that we keep track of in these reports. I have years and years and years of data for like what the cycle is here. And so what I could see was that active inventory dropped, but also the number of pending contracts was significantly higher. If they had been pulled due to storm damage, which I'm sure some of them were pulled to storm damage. So what I actually saw was the number of pending contracts went up significantly, about 300 to 400 contracts, which is extremely unusual for that short of a, <laughs> of a period of time. So again, people making moves, securing housing. I've checked it a few times since then, and things have kind of stabilized a little bit. It's definitely not like a trend change, and it's probably not going to affect like median sales price or anything like that. But it is noteworthy enough because that was a major shift in the number of homes for sale in uh, the last three, four, five months. Second follow-up question that everybody always has is how is this going to impact home prices long-term? Are people going to be scared to buy a house? And the answer is probably will not have a significant impact. Now, obviously, yes, the immediate aftermath, everything is still fresh in the country and the states and residents' minds. You know, the damage produced is still piled up by uh, the front of the street. You know, there's going to be pods and containers everywhere as people store their, um, you know, store the stuff from their house, put their house back together and then move everything back in. Again, while all that stuff is going on, yes, people are going to be a little hesitant to uh, buy houses in those neighborhoods. But as those neighborhoods and areas get cleaned up and things revert to normal, which is, you know, no, no storm damage and the houses, uh, you know, put together and looking appealing and all that stuff. As all of that stuff starts to happen, the buyers that are in the market, uh, they don't remember all of the images on the news and stuff like that. And then demand returns and things return to normal. Now, how long that takes depends on the level of damage and the level of renovations that's going on. Uh, obviously, if there's just a tree down, that's a lot easier to solve than, you know, if you have 3,000 homes in a neighborhood that have had to tear out all of the drywall and all of their cabinets and all that's piled up by the road. So again, you kind of have those differing, you know, expectations for time frames. One thing I will say is I had been asked more about short acres recently, and it's kind of a, it's a two part thing. One is the low lying nature of shore acres is a lot more prevalent in people's minds. And that's backed up and reinforced by the sheer number of homes that are for sale there. So it's kind of a two part thing. If there was not so many homes for sale there, I don't think that there would be as much of an impact on home prices out there, but because there is a large number of homes for sale out there, that oversupply does lead to, you know, declining home prices. Um, and again, I've been through, you know, three or four of these sorts of storm cycles of recovery. I went through, you know, my own flooding and I was actively listing, um, you know, I was act actively had homes in the neighborhood that were for sale and under contract whenever tropical storm Eta came through and flooded the Troy acres there. So I've seen kind of the cycle happen a few times and that's generally how this all plays out. So surprisingly, this will probably not have the effect that everyone thinks that it will. Obviously the recovery is going to take a long time. You know, it definitely, I don't wish it on it. Like having been through my own, I don't wish it on anybody. But for looking at like long-term big picture, most of the general public, their memory is relatively short. So long-term impacts on the real estate market should be pretty isolated. And especially as the recovery comes along and starts to happen. We've also had some help with uh, interest rates coming down a pretty good chunk, which has helped spur some new uh, demand as buyers kind of come back to the market with interest rates being in the sixes and even the high fives that, I, that I've heard of. But yeah, the big main story for the next probably one to three months is going to be the story for the next one to three months is going to be the storm recovery, 
you know, dealing with the aftermath of that, getting everything cleaned up and put a little bit back together. You know, next month statistics, I'm curious to see what the numbers are going to be. But again, not really going to be able to give them a lot of weight just because so much of a monkey wrench gets thrown into the works whenever you have uh, one hurricane come through, let alone two in short order that cause two different types of storm damage. Anyway, it's not the, you know, nuclear real estate catastrophe shouldn't be, but it is going to affect things for the foreseeable future. So thank you so much for tuning in for these real estate market statistics. My name is Kyle Sasser. If you'd like help finding your own great place in the Tampa Bay area, I would love to help you out. You can give me a call at 727-300-2111, or if you prefer, usually the best thing to do is to book a chat at the time that works best for you. And a link to that, uh, to the calendar where you can book that chat is uh, in the description down below. If you have any questions or concerns, if you need help with, you know, just trying to figure out or navigate your, your uh, flood thing or what you should do, please feel free to reach out. You can give me a call. You can shoot me an email. You can leave a comment in this down below and I'll be happy to respond to you and help you however I can. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Kyle Sasser and I'll talk to you soon.